do we describe what your role is? Yeah, like what's your job? Yes, exactly. I am a very annoying multi-hyphenate. That is very <laughs> popular these days, but um, I have multiple income streams, but I make content mostly for brands to help sell their products. And then I do traditional acting and podcasting and writing as well. And the reason brands come to you is because of your reach, because of the impact you make and the content you produce across platforms. What do you make of the content that you could be putting out? Where do you align yourself? Is it TikTok? Is the future about Instagram? Do you still even go on X? So I think t TikTok is absolutely the future. I think in terms of TikTok ads, the uh, amount that you can go viral on TikTok is so significant. I mean, I think if you have a podcast and you have uh, a, partic a particular sound bite that goes viral, you overnight now have this massive following that you didn't have before. Or if there's a product, you're, you're being pushed a product by an ad by someone who's authentically selling it to you in a, in a relatable, sometimes like comedic way. And I think people really relate to that. Like they did with your video yes. about underwear. Right, yes. on YouTube. But here's the thing. Yes. Right? So after you were announced on the ones to watch list, Caroline and I look at where we can find you. Right. Everywhere, frankly. Yeah. X, the formerly known as Twitter, YouTube, uh -huh. TikTok. So do you make a piece for each one or do you just say, okay, I'm going to make a video and I'm just going to send it far and wide? Like it's very time consuming mm -hmm. and energy intensive. Well, it depends on the client. So with different clients, the scope of work is completely different. Maybe it's a YouTube ad for one client, maybe for another client, it's UGC content, which is user generated content. And you have where, different numbers of followers on each. Yes, yes. But sometimes they're pushing it just on their socials. Sometimes I'm pushing it on mine. It really depends on the client and what the, the deal is, how it's structured. Ultimately, are you embracing the world of artificial intelligence to enhance the way in which you can produce content? The only way I'm embracing artificial intelligence is through ChatGPT. I use it every day, um, mostly just to make uh, pitch decks for different brands um, and then sometimes for re research, but that's it. How confident in the long term uh, stability of the world in which you work do you feel? How much do you think you continue to monetize in the way that you currently monetize? I think um, I feel very good about it because I think that's the way things are moving. I think we're moving away from traditional commercials and traditional advertising and we're moving more towards these um, kind of like micro influencers and comedians uh, all driving uh, or working with brands to sell products. Like I feel that that's the way marketing is going and advertising is going. Um, like I buy more things from TikTok ads and Instagram ads and YouTube ads than I ever did from like commercials on television. So I think it's a good lane to be in. You, you have a, a good following, but not massive, right? I think no. it's fair to say. Who do you look up to? Who are the content creators you try and model yourself after? Um, well, Okay. Or is that the wrong strategy? You know, I kind of look to a lot of different people, like podcasters. I, I look up to people like um, Bobby Altoff. She's like one of these people who blew up overnight, and that's exactly what I was trying to say earlier. She had one podcast episode with a very hilarious comedian that blew up, and her next guest was Drake. But that's just because her her these little sound bites went viral on TikTok. So. I look up to people like that who take really interesting angles with their podcasting.